Good morning! I'm Angelo Castro III. I'm Angela and we are the Castros. Tingnan muna. Oo. Happy, uh, ano ba ngayon? Tuesday, Happy June Tuesday. 18. Oh, oh. Makulimlim na Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Good morning sa lahat ng uh, Boston fans na mag, uh, sasaya. Ano na ba? Magsasaya na ang mamayang talaga? konti. Uh, third Ilan quarter na, na po, 25 ang lamang ng Boston ah, Celtics. Ah, wala. Ayun, oh, no. Ayun, oh. If ever manalo sila mamaya, first in since 2000, not first, since 2008 ng champion ang huli nila. Matagal-tagal na rin. Matagal-tagal ano? na rin. Oh, Ayan. Alright, madami tayong balita today. That's why let's get it rolling because we're serving you news in a countdown. All that before your second cup of coffee. This is Brunch. Punching first on our 10th spot in the countdown are the country's Paris Olympic, Olympics flag bearers. Boxers Nesty Patesho and Carlo Paalam will carry our flag and lead the Philippine team in the opening ceremony on the Paris, of the Paris Olympics. The Philippine Olympic Committee chose the two because of their stellar performance in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics where they nabbed silver medals. Team Philippines currently has 15 Olympians aiming to bring home the bacon. The Paris Olympics will start on July 26 with Signal TV as its official broadcaster in the Philippines. Ayos, oh, no. flag bearer. Looking oh. forward sa kanila. Si Nesty, medyo muntik na yun mag, ano, eh. mag-podium finish sa Olympics. Eh. Konti oh. na lang eh, sayang. Mm-mm. Pero this time around, tignan natin. Oh, 15 na no, yung athletes natin. 15 na athletes, na not, counting pa, not counting pa yung resulta ng, ano, ng, world, ng FIBA ano, uh, qualifier sa basketball. Ayos. So baka pumasok mga basketball team yung gilas. Siyempre, go Team Philippines! Uh-oh. Okay, sige, let's continue with our countdown. Coming in at our ninth spot, the nation's girl group Bini is now the Philippines' top artist on Spotify surpassing Taylor Swift. The group has become the country's most listened to singer according to Spotify charts. They first entered the charts in February and have been in the ranking before reaching the peak spot. Bini, which has over 6 million monthly listeners on Spotify, is known for their hit songs Pantropico and Salamin Salamin. The top artist was previously Taylor Swift, who held the spot for nearly a thousand days. Congratulations wow, ah. sa Bini talagang. Wow, ah. Taylor Swift There's no uh, stopping Bini. Nagulat nga ako na ano eh, may ganyan na pala. Oo. Oh, oh. oh. Tapos Nung mga panahon daw natin, oh, oh. ang Bini noon, yung sex bomb dancers. Eh, panahon ko hindi pa ata pinanganak mga Bini. <laughs> ah, Oo, oh, wala pa. Oo, oh, oh. pero kung dami ah. ang tawag doon pala oh. sa mga supporters and fans ng Bini ay blooms. Blooms? Oo, oh, yun ang tawag Bakit sa kanila. Bini ang diba pagka BTS Army? Oo. Oh. Kapag Bini Blooms. Bakit nga? Ano ibig sabihin ng Bini? Hindi, Bini yung pangalan nila. Pero, oh, does it mean nga? Hindi ko alam. Hindi ko alam. Research nga kasi. Bini Bini. Bini Bini. Bini Bini naman pala. Oh, pa, Galing na direct. Pang... Karin ni Direct Marvin alam na alam ha. Yes, so, of course. Pero alam natin yung kanta nila yung Pantropico. Lagi natin narinig oh, sa radio ko yan. yan. Tsaka talagang usong-uso. Taylor Swift lang yan. Uh, sila rin yung ano, sila rin yung nag-perform sa libreng event yes, ng yung government. Yes, yung trending the other, the oh, other day. Oh, yung tinigil nila actually yung performance nila dahil nagkakagulo ng Crowd control daw issue. Crowd control issue. Alright, let's uh, move forward. Authorities warned the public against the purchase and consumption of unregistered imported dietary pills. The Food and Drug Administration says several brands have no certificate of product registration. Now, the FDA also asked the Bureau of Customs to restrain the entry of unregistered imported products. It stressed that the manufacture, sale, and distribution of unregistered products are prohibited. Now, let's talk more, uh, let's talk more about the warning from FDA. We have with us FDA Director General Dr. Samuel Zacate joining us live via Zoom. Magandang umaga, Doc. Magandang umaga po, sir. Uh, magandang araw po sa mga nanonood po here in branch. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us. Of course. Doc, uh, how, uh, how dangerous is it to, ano, uh, yung consumption, yung paggamit ng mga produkto, especially mga diet pills, na hindi pala registered? 
Ano yung magiging problema dito? Anong common products na nakikita natin na pumapasok sa ating bansa? Um, basically, sir, uh, if a product is registered in the FDA, the public is uh, safe to say that it uh, passes the stringent requirements mm -hmm. of our agency. So it passes the safety, efficacy, and the quality aspect ng ating regulatory agency. Uh, when we issue yung tinatawag namin certificate of product registration, it will tell the patient or the public kung ano lang po yung approved na indication. Mm, okay. So in this case, if it, the product is approved for dietary, no, magpara slimming, kumbaga anti-obesity, uh, makakagarantiya tayo na yung produkto na yon ay eh, ligtas, efficient, and uh, nagdaan sa masusin proseso. So papasok dun sa aspeto na yon. If the product is not registered, now the public is not sure if it is safe or totally indicated yung kanyang mm. indication or yung kanyang paggamit. So, oh. it will compromise the public health in general po talaga. Mm -hmm. Ayun na nga po, sir. No? So, paano po ba malalaman ng mga consumers natin, paano nila madetermine no, kung yung mga products na binibili nila ay FDA approved? Okay po. May dalawang channel po kasi ang isang gamot, lalo na yung mga ganyan, anti-obesity na medicine. It's either it is imported coming from other countries na pupunta rito sa Pilipinas or we manufactured it at ginagamit ng publiko. Ngayon, on the packaging itself, doon sa may mismong gamot, meron doon tinatawag na hmm. number or uh, approval number sa likod ng kanila mga boxes. That is one way of checking it physically. So, pero meron pa rin po tayo tinatawag na FDA verification portal. It is a list of all the approved and registered product na nagdaan po sa ating Food and Drug Administration. Nasa website lang po namin yon. They just tap the FDA verification portal. Mayroon po itong search. Talagay lang po nila yung brand name at malakikita na po nila agad-agaran kung yan po ay registrado or not. You're talking about, Doc, na yung safety na if isang produkto ay uh, nag-register sa inyo, uh, at least may protection ng atin mga consumers. Paano kung registered nga ang product pero ang, ang gamit niya is off-label? Uh, yeah, ang ganda so, ng tanong. Yes, paano po mangyayari dyan? Okay po. Actually, yung tinasabi po ni Sir na off-label practice, yung po yung um, if, a, if a drug is indicated for a certain disease mm -hmm. at ang isang consumer o isang pasyente, ginamit niya outside dun sa approval. Yeah. We call that off-label practice. No, the FDA, ang aming mandato po is within the bounds of the registration. If we do all label practice, it is the practice of the doctor who advises mm. that the patient should go otherwise with the approved therapeutic indication. So it's a matter of discernment of the doctor. Ang problema dyan, sir, sa so off-label practice na yan, uh -huh. for example, isang gamot, para po daw ito sa sipon, yes. sabi ni Doc, pwede mong gamitin yan pampapayat. Mm. Pero yes. hindi po namin registrado as pampapayat, pang lang. So, si Doc, he can advise it. Ngayon, it's a matter of uh, risk on the, on the part of the doctor and the consumer. Kapag may nangyari sa pasyente, is a matter of question of medical practice. Mm, okay. Mm. So, yung liability... It is outside the bounds of the FDA kasi nandun lang kami sa produkto. Okay. Ngayon liab... po, ang problema sa Pilipinas, okay. wala po tayo tinatawag na off-label practice law. We do not punish the act itself. So, ang hihintayin lang po ng pasyente kapag nagkaroon ng side effect at hindi sila informed at hindi pala in-registrado sa amin, then they can go mm -hmm. to the doctor for prescribing the medicine outside the um, registered indication. Okay. Uh, mm. now, Pero yun nga po, no? so, sabi nga po nila, talamak ngayon yung uh, uh, mga diet pills ngayon, unregistered sila. Pero meron po bang penalty or ano yung penalty dun sa mga sellers na falsely claiming yung product sila ay FDA approved? Mm. Approve. Especially, paano rin po ma-regulate yung mga binibenta sa online? Uh, Isa-isahin po natin, kapag ang isang produkto po is unregistered, it is punishable by law. So, ang batas po na nagpa-punish yan is the Republic Act 9711, which is the Food and Drug Administration mm -hmm. Act. Mm -hmm. So, the mere fact it is unregistered, punishable po yan. Meron po yung penalty of 50,000 but not exceeding 500,000 and the jail time. And mm -hmm. or jail time. So, dun pa lang sa fact na minarket mo yung produkto at walang registro sa amin, pwede na po kayong parusahan. Okay. So, second mm -hmm. po, ang susunod na po tanong dyan, eh, 
DG, Director General, ang dami na nga po unregistered, nagtalamak po, nagagamit, mm. nakikita po namin sa online. So nakikita po namin na nandyan po sa merkado at ano po ang ginagawa ng FDA through that. So meron po kaming continuous monitoring sa mga online platforms. We always tell the online seller or online platforms to take down the product at meron silang listahan yon. They have easy access to us through the FDA verification portal. The problem with it is the jurisdictional aspect and the attitude of the online or illegal online sellers. Kasi once they take down the product, they can always create a new account and create a new one. Ngayon po, ang proseso po kasi sa FDA, we must serve a summon. We must serve a notice to those violators. And most of those violators, they do not have a physical office. So, yung iba dyan, oh. ginagamit lang po nila sa bahay nila, yes. di namin oh. matuntun, or It meron man silang condominium, lilipat lang po sila. So, yun po yung hirap na uh, hindi lang po naman na ahensya ng FDA din, may isa ibang ahensya, nahihirapan din po kami talagang tuntunin yung mga illegal sellers na yan. So, kaya nga po, this year, uh, we will collaborate with the, with the NBI, National Bureau of Investigation. We will coordinate also mm -hmm. with the CIDG to have a one unified regulatory agency and enforcement agency para po kami po ay magkaroon po ng uh, pagsisisure o pagsisita uh, dun sa mga online seller because it is very dangerous to the public. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on the current system, hirap kami. I will, I, I will admit that hirap kami na patigilin or completely pahintuin. So ang ginagawa namin ngayon is tinutoon down namin. So it is also not on the obligation of FDA alone. Kasi dapat partner po yan eh. For example, ang consumer at ang FDA regulatory agency, they must be a partner para totally ma-eliminate. Kasi po, kapag yung mga unregistered product yeah. mm -hmm. and mga peking produkto na yan, eh walang tumangkilik. Yan po ihihinto naman eventually. Mm -hmm. So, oh. andyan naman po ang mga mekanismo ng Food and Drug Administration to verify the product. The consumer must only be aware on how to verify Yun. it. Siguro, so, it's a mm -hmm. tandem po. Kailangan po namin ang partner ng public dito. Oh, oh, Kasi oh. yun nga po, uh, wala naman pong tatangkilik, ay wala naman pong, uh, wala naman pong peke kung wala naman tumatangkilik. Oh, okay. as, for us, we will coordinate through Intel. We will collaborate with the uh, law enforcement agency para dun talaga sa mga pasaway eh, maturuan po natin ang leksyon. Totoo yan. Siguro, uh, siguro paalalahalan na lang din po natin yung publiko at ma, ma, mapaliwanag po sa kanila kung ano po ba yung risk diba, na gagawin po nila sa kanilang mga sarili, sa kanilang uh, kalusugan, sa pag-take po nitong mga unregistered na mga diet pills. Um, basically po, ganito po yan. The basic tenet of the medicine is the benefit must outweigh, outweighs the risk. So, kaya po tayo umiinom ng gamot, lahat naman po ng gamot may side effect yan. Mm -hmm. So, wala naman po tayong lusot dyan. Even the food supplement, pag napasobra, may side effect. Pero, the basic na dapat nasa mind ng isang consumer o isang pasyente, that yung ginagamit mo, eh mas marami ang benepisyo Totoo. kumpara sa this. Now, if the medicine is not prescribed or indicated for a certain disease, at nagdaan sa FDA, mm -hmm. kasi kami meron po kami tinatawag na mga clinical trials, may yes. mga masususi kami proseso eh, na para sabihin na yung gamot na yun, eh para dito. Ngayon, kapag yun po, eh hindi nagdaan sa amin, mm -hmm. it's a very high risk compared to the benefit. Mm -hmm. So, it's a matter of the choice of the consumer, kasi andyan naman po ang makinarya. Kahit sabihin po ng FDA, na ito lang siya, para dito lang. Mm -hmm. Pero kung gusto talaga niya i-take yung risk, It's a, hindi po yan makakaganda sa inyong kalusugan. Exactly. Mamaya, akala ninyo po nakakatipid yeah, kayo. Uh -huh. Sinabi lang po ng kapitbahay ninyo, bukas-bukas po, nagkakaroon na po kayo ng mga major side effects. Oh. Buti sana kung side effects lang. So, complicate pa sa oh. sariling kalusugan. Oh. Basta Opo, the benefits sana. Kasi po, mga eh. consumers natin, madali pong madala yan sa mga sabi-sabi ng mga naka, naka, mm. ano na, naka, nakasubok na. Right. Pero ang problema po kasi doon, it's a case-to-case -case basis. Saka sometimes, yeah. testimonial uh, lang naman po yun ng mga consumers. How okay. can we be sure that the effect is consistent, lalo mm -hmm. na sa mga anti-obesity pills, that is consistent with each other patient and the benefits 
outweighs the risk and the side effects is very minimal compared to the dose that they are taking. Kasi paulit-ulit po nilang ititik yes, so, yan. Okay. Mm -mm. Yun, so right. basta yun, the benefits outweighs the risk. Yan. Uh, well said, Doc. Uh, with that, thank you very much uh, for joining us, FDA Director General Dr. Samuel Zacate. Thank you, Po. Thank Good you. Morning. Coming up, former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque defended himself after authorities obtained documents bearing his name in the raided Pogo Hub in Porak, Pampanga. And what was the armed forces of the Philippines' response to the recent accusations of China? Mm, dami pa. Dami tayong pag-uusapan. May init. Correct. And we are just getting started, mga kapatid. More of our top 10 news when brunch returns. Keep it here on One News. Watching brunch here on One News. Oy. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Good morning sa mga ka-brunch natin. Maraming salamat sa mga message na pinapadala nyo. Of course, Alex Fuentes, mga stickers. Ito si Mig Zebron. Good morning daw kay Angela and Jego. Ralph Domingo. Let's go Boston daw. Ako, oh, mukhang uh, mag-champion tayo ah, pag Boston. Mm. And then si Sam Pokemon Go. Good morning daw. Uh, anong shades? Oh, Shades si... na po ako, iyak na ago ah, kasi ma maverick siya. Oh, oh. Si Gina... Yung mga ano yan, ah, dun sa mga kakachunin lang, yung mga binabasa po ni, uh, ni Jego ngayon, ay yung mga comments natin from Facebook accounts. Mm -hmm. uh... Kasi meron pa tayong YouTube account yes. na hindi pa natin nababasa. Oh, oh. Ito si Gary ko sa YouTube, nabasa ko na siya. Hello Gary, sabi ang bilis ko daw itong ano, lumipat from kabilang studio to here. Mm -hmm. But of course, batiin ko lang din ito si Erika Santos, si Naldi, Tito Naldi Cancio, Uh, na laging nanonood sa atin. Si Vlad. Sa Pokemon Go, yan. Kasi Mother Earth. Of course. Good morning. Sige, let's continue with our countdown. Ranking 7th are the three OFW victims of a fire in Kuwait. Their remains have arrived in the country yesterday. The grief-stricken families of Jesus Lopez, Edwin Petras Petilia, and Jeffrey Cayubay emotionally welcomed their remains at the People's Air Cargo and Warehousing Center in Naiya. Six Filipinos survived the fire in the crowded dormitory building in Kuwait on June 12, while two OFWs are still under intensive care unit. 49 people died from the said fire. The Overseas Worker Welfare Administration, or OWA, assured the family of the victims that they will cover the burial expenses. They will also offer scholarship grants to the children of the three OFWs. Ang OWA, mayroon alala na bibigay na bereavement and funeral and uh, other benefits were 220. And uh, ang kumpanya, ay magbibigay rin na $10,000, ang Kuwait the government, $15,000, at inaasikaso pa natin yung insurance. So lahat yan, masasagot na kaagad yan. Okay, prayers sa mga namatayan. And yung nasa ICU pa, sana, ano, no, they pull Bumuti through. Bumuti yung kalagayan. They make it, we're all rooting for them. Uh, of course, uh, nag, uh, they went out of the country to provide for their families. So nakakalangkot naman kung... Ganyan na mangyayari. Tragic accident pa. We send our condolences to the families. And of course, dun sa lahat-lahat, mm. ano, 49 kasi died and more of them are Indian national. So, uh, these are... All of them. Prayers all for all of, of them. them. All yeah. of them, no? Tapos, ito kasi ay dormitory ng mga workers. Mm -hmm. ba diba? So, ang mga employers naman ito, mga Filipino, mga kababayan natin na nadamay doon, are very cooperative. Sabi nga sa atin ni uh, uh, Secretary Hans Leo Kakta, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, coordinating... Uh, doon sa mga po pwede nilang maibigay dito sa, sa victim. Mabilis ang response nila. Yes. Oh, oh. And then, of course, iniimbestagahan pa nila kasi kung ano talaga yung oh, oh. Nang, naging cause ng fire. Uh, sabi nila kasi there were 20 gas uh, stoves ano, ang uh, present doon. So, maaring nag-contribute din yun. Kaya if you will see daw yung mga uh, victims, mm. walang mga sugat talaga eh. Gas inhalation. inhalation. Yung uh, kinamatay o yung, isa, yung dalawang nasa IC, yun ang kanilang naging problema din. Saka ibang Kuwaiti officials nagagalit eh. Dahil medyo overcrowded daw ang ginawa ng may ari ng building eh. Yun ang dapat hinayaan niya mag uh, Hinayaan niya mag-overcrowd daw per unit ang mga tao doon. Which is also poses a safety risk. Plus may kakaroon ng problema sa mga insurance sa building. Mm -hmm. And kung may mangyari, 
Uh, buti na lang na ayos sila lang uh, mabuti. Yes. No? Oh. And they have to check also, if I'm not mistaken, yung mga uh, fire exit ata doon, mm. may mga nakaharang din. Ah, Parang okay. yun yung sinabi ng ibang mga pamilya. Hindi sila compliant. Oo, oh, oh. mm -hmm. at saka nakakaawa din kasi bago namatay itong mga to, eh nakausap pa nila yung pamilya nila. Diba? The day before or yung mismong araw na hindi na siya na, nasusunog daw yung lugar nila, hindi sila makalabas. So, it's really uh, painful doon sa family so, na nila. So, ng phone, wala na pala. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. ah, anyway, uh, okay, let's move on. Twenty-one seafarers from Houthi attacked ship have safely returned to the Philippines. One Filipino crew member, however, remains missing following the June 12 attack. The Migrant Workers Department says search operations is underway. The MW officials are also set to meet to discuss possible amendments to their policy on their red on the Red Sea. Etong mga nangyari no recently. Susuriin natin muli yung patakaran na yan. Kasi ang titingnan natin ayon sa record may consent ng seafarers, no? But we want to look at that closely kung paano isinagawa yung consent number 1 and number 2 kung paano tinupad ng ship owner, yung mga regulasyon na binanggit ko. We want to review the current policy and see how else we can make the policy stronger. Kung paano tinanggap yung, kung paano tinanggap yung consent, kung na-explain ba fully sa mga seafarers natin, ano yung risk involved. Tapos yung mga protocol daw kung susunod rin ng sinunod ng shipping line. For context lang, Diego, sige, explain mo nga sa kanila ano yung consent to sail. Ako ba? Ako pinapa-explain, ikaw ang may alam dyan. Hindi, hindi, kasi for context lang din, di ba? Dahil may mga ruta po dyan na hindi po pwedeng daanan, di ba? So ngayon, meron pong consent to sail na maaaring pirmahan ng ating mga kababayan, mga crew members, kung okay pa rin naman sa kanila na maglayag doon sa area na yun, pero bibigyan sila ng karapatang dagdag na beneficyo. Naka-explain yung risk sa kanila. Yung risk. Pero pwede silang hindi rin sumama. Hmm. ba diba? So, ang nangyari po dito sa 21 or 22 seafarers natin, meron daw silang consent to sale. So, yung sinasabi ni uh, Secretary Hans Leo Kakdak, they have to revisit yung policy doon, anong klaseng Uh, consent to sale yung naibigay yeah. sa kanila, na-explain ba sa kanila, naintindihan ba, etc. Parang so, ano yung ano yun eh, parang sa call center, may graveyard yeah, shift, oh. tapos may consent to, parang may hazard pay, tapos kailangan ni-inform sa'yo, ano ba graveyard shift? Is it 12, 1 o'clock, 2 oh, o'clock, 3 o'clock? So oh. dapat sa, sa seafarers yung sinasabi mo, i-explain sa kanila, ano, saan tayo dadaan, di ba? Ano yung risk na pwede natin po, kung kunyari, Somalia, mga pirates oh, ba, ang mga ano, pirata ba? Oh, sasalubong oh, sa ito. Or oh. sana, pwede rin nilang i-revisit kung baka, yung pinag-uusapan din natin mm. yesterday, na baka po pwede i-temporary ba na lang muna, wag na lang muna payagan oh, yung, yung mga... Ruta na yun. Yung ruta na yun talaga. Wag na magbigay ng consent to sale. And if you will talk to the uh, families nga nitong 21 seafarers na nakauwi dito, masaya sila. Of course, na yung pamilya nila nakauwi dito, ligtas, walang nangyari. Eh sinasabi nila, eh, hindi na daw nila muna papaalisin yung yes, kanilang mga so, kaanak kasi mahirap na sa papano, di ba? Ano yung pagkakakitaan ninyo? Na sabi nila, maghahanap na lang sila dito ng po pwede nilang pagkakitaan kesa daw sila ay yung nangangamba, no? Yung, yung worry nila na alam nila yung family nila ay nasa uh, in danger. But what's more kumbaga, saddening right now is yung isang naiiwan doon. No, nawawala. Na, nawawala. Sabi nila, supposedly baka daw nasa engine room kaya hindi nakita. Itong 21 uh, Filipino crew member na to, mm. they, ano daw eh, parang uh, they held out, no? Uh, as much as they can uh, to make sure na mahanap nila tong isa. Pero unfortunately, hindi nga daw nila mahanap. Mm. But sana we are nag, still hoping. Sana nagtatago lang siya. Oh, we are still hoping na bago pa talagang tuluyang masira yung barko doon. Kasi palutang-lutang yes. yun eh. Oh. Pero may marami na daw tubig ang pumasok eh, di ba? Yeah. Na ongoing pa rin naman yung search and rescue na operation oh, sa... Oh na ginagawa nila doon. But you're still hoping Saka pa rin. Saka at itignan at, ata ng DMW is ano eh, if ever magkakaroon ng uh, revisit of the, yung, yung consent to sale issue na yan, kung i-blacklist nila yung, uh, yung area na yon, yung mm -hmm. corridor na yon kung saan dumadaan na may hazard, uh, baka naman kasi other European liners at pass naman in, the, in Western Europe, uh, pwede silang mag-accept ng seafarers na yon na hindi papayagan sa Middle East. Kung baga, 
may possible other uh, opportunity to earn money in a different route. Pero tinitignan pa nila lahat yon mm -hmm. Because we don't know how long this conflict sa Israel will draw exactly. out. Exactly. Hanggang may conflict dan sa Israel between uh, Israel and Palestine, eh, the iran baka Houthi rebels will continue. Will continue their oh, condemnation. Condemnation. By ano ba? Di ba? Uh, harassing. Harassing yung mga dumadaan dun yeah. sa kanila. Yes. All right, let's uh, move forward to our next topic for today. Landing on the fifth spot are mini scam hubs. The Presidential Anti Organized Crime Commissioner Paok said the number of mini scam hubs are rising amid the focus on raiding illegal pogo hubs. Now, Paok spokesperson Winston Casho said the number of mini scam hubs are rising, particularly in Metro Manila and Central Luzon. He said many scam hubs are more confident to operate. Unlike the usual pogo hubs that occupy hectares of land, many scam hubs can operate in smaller spaces like apartments and condo units. Yung naging paraan nila to adjust, to adapt to us, they, they disintegrated, they divided themselves into smaller groups. The problem here is, the, the problem is that they actually operate in plain sight. So, masyado silang, how would I call it? Masyado silang kampante. So, ito siguro yung mga parang nahuli sa, yung recently? Saan? Yung scam hub sa subdivision. Ah, yung sa Paranaque. Oh. Pero ano yun eh, uh, medyo malalaki din eh, tsaka maraming establishments. Mm. Itong sinasabi nilang mini scam hub, so yung parang per condo unit lang. Tapos madiliit talaga. Hindi mo, hindi mo mapapansin na kung ikaw nasa labas ng condo unit na yun, mm. hindi mo mapapansin na sa loob nun may nangyayaring uh, online gambling. Ah, parang may narinig ako na sa Ortigas, nagpo-post daw as a BPO sa maliliit. Mm -hmm. Yung mga small small BPOs, pag pinasok mo daw yung loob ng BPO na yun, uh, makikita mo daw, kunyari, 10-15 employees pero may 100 cell phones. Mm -hmm. diba? yung pala, doon na nagsisimula yung mga pagbablast na mga yung mga text loans. Diba? Yes, oo. Yung Kaya pala, ngayon, oh, oh. tama ka dyan. Kaya yung dole ngayon, sinasabi oh. nila, they're trying to uh, not trying, but they are banning also yung mga work from, work home, from home, home setup na setup ng Pogo. Kasi nga, ay, yung, hindi sila yung nagbabana. Binaban nila yung pagbibigay mm. ng uh, alien uh, employment A -E permit. A -E permit. A -E diba? Doon sa mga foreign workers uh -huh. na maaari nagsiset up nga ng ganito ng mga mini scam hubs sa iba't ibang Problema condo dyan, or apart apartment. You can ban it, pero how will you know na yun ang gagawin nila? Yun kasi na. they could apply for an AEP sa or isang company BPO, na front. Oh, oh. Kasi ang gawa, pag ginagawa ng mga ibang pogo dyan, it starts out as mag apply ka as illegal mm -hmm. o gaming, offshore gaming ka eh. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, pwede mong who's to stop you kung lalabas ka ng premises, pupunta ka sa mga mini scam mm -hmm. hubs na yan. We don't even know kung anong link ng mga mini scam hubs sa mga actual pogo na ito. Yes. Sila pa rin yun Para, na nag-branch out lang. Maka satellite lang sila per oh. area. Kasi for example, nasa Tarlac yung illegal na pogo na yan. Mm -hmm. Tapos nag-open sila ng maliit na scam hub sa, mm -hmm. sa Ortigas or sa Makati, di ba? Hindi mo alam eh. Saka ang mahirap lang dyan, kasi kung mga mini scam hubs na nasa apartment or condo, syempre kailangan makipag-coordinate ka. Kasi private, uh, private ano yan eh. Di ba area, you have to coordinate with the association, yung management, etc. So, doon naman sa, sa Pampanga, yung, go, yung governor doon, mm. di ba, nagsabi na siya na magdo-door to door daw sila. <laughs> sa mga areas doon kasi nga doon, dito nga sa issue ng uh, mini scam hubs or mini uh, pogo hubs doon sa area nila so Mayroon they will start yun. yung investigating by doing door to door so parang ano ba yung census <laughs> diba? random di mo so, pwede lahat yun ang dami noon dami noon oo pero i think baka dito din sa Metro Manila they'll do that as well dahil yeah. parami ng parami but moving forward to our next uh, uh, story for today Now sizzling at our fourth spot is another government website hacking. The Maritime Industry Authority or Marina confirmed that its four web-based systems suffered data breaches. Marina said their systems were attacked and compromised by unknown hackers. Despite this, their hack systems are still operational for the submission and processing of applications. Marina is now investigating the cyber attack with the Department of Information and Communications Technology. 
Hindi pa natin alam kung mm. anong klaseng hacking yung ginawa nila. Eh, no? Galing kung... kaya sa Pogo Hub daw. Ayun lang. Kasi diba dun sa, sa Bamban, sa meron daw... Ay, Tarlac ba yun? Ito yun yung eh. Link. Sa Bamban, Tarlac. Oo. Oh, oh. oh, oh. Nakita nila yung, nung renade nila, yung isang uh, hub doon na illegal. Uh, sila ang source ng... May mga gumagawang hacking. Nila, ano? oh, hindi mo nila na-point out which specific website ang hinak nila. Pero they're doing hacking activities. So, hindi mm. natin alam... Ang dami nang... Saka anong, kla- yun nga, anong klaseng hacking yung ginawa? Mm. Uh, did they, kumbaga, di ba yung sa PhilHealth before, nagkaroon sila ng parang unang, anong tawag doon? Ano, ransom, ano yung oh, malware oh, ransom, oh, parang oh, may trojan. Diba? Oh, Sinabi oh. na, o oh, sige, pag di nyo kami binigyan ng ganitong klaseng halaga, eh, ano, idalabas namin sa dark web yung mga impormasyon na, yeah. na hack namin, di ba, sa PhilHealth, yun ang sinasabi na. Dito, yun ang hindi natin alam. Kasi, kasi may mga several kinds of hacking, yung, yung sinatawag nila ng ransom hacking. Yes. They will yung entire data mo, they will keep it to themselves until you can pay them. Sinasabi mo nga, kung oh. hindi, ilalabas namin sa dark web. Or, uh, totally, hindi ka bibigyan ng access sa ng system files mo at sa mga importanteng files until you pay them. Yes. May kanya-kanyang style yung mga yan eh. Oh. Or, totally, yung mga talagang radical hackers, they will shut down your system, take control of your system. Mm-mm. Oo. And nag S. Mm-mm. Alright, Oy. sige, balikan natin yung usapin sa Pogo, yung mga maliliit na, yung sasabi na mini scam hubs. Hub, so. ano? To get more information about this, we have uh, Paox spokesperson Winston Casho. Good morning, uh, Spox. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, good morning, Angelo and Angel. Yes, yes uh, Spox, no? anong klase mga scam po ang karaniwan po ginagawa sa mga scam hubs na ito? Parang... Uh, ngayon ko lang narinig itong mini scam hubs. Is this a new in concept or a born out of yung Pogo? Well, uh, we've been noticing this situation as of uh, late last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, ang napansin kasi namin, after we've been raiding the, uh, the big hubs, the big okay. scam farms, mm-hmm. uh, they've transitioned into smaller ones Probably because they've, they've adapted para pag na, uh, pa hindi sila mahuli lahat sa minsanan lang na operation. Okay. So, uh, we've noticed this in uh, Metro Manila and Central Luzon. Nasa maliliit silang mga apartment okay. uh, buildings, apartment complexes, and uh, condominiums. And even um, dito sa mga plush, uh, mga posh subdivisions dito sa Metro Manila. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Pero here in Metro Manila, uh, mm-hmm. anong pong city specifically yung merong mas maraming mini scam hubs na na-record po natin at namomonitor? Yung mamonitor po namin ay nandito sa Southern Metro Manila. No? Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, basically, nandyan sila sa mga magagandang mga condominium unit. No? Okay. We Ako. don't want to, uh, yes, yes, yes. to name the condominium yes. units, no? but there's... They're in really good uh, condominium units because of the southern part of Metro Manila. And then, yeah. they, 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 sorry, sorry, Le, uh, go ahead. De, gusto ko lang din po malaman kasi uh, kung nakapag-coordinate na rin po kayo dito so, sa mga apartment or condo management na sinasabi nyo po na possibly ito po ay uh, nag-ooperate sila ng mga mini scam hubs sa kanilang area. Yeah, uh, nak as of now, wala pa kaming coordination doon sa mga condominium uh, uh, corporation. But what we've done so far, I, uh, we have coordinated with our partner agencies. No? Mm-hmm. So, uh, together with Pagco and ALG, we already met the licensed IGL. That yeah. was, I think, uh, last week, last Monday yata yun. Then, um, we're planning to meet naman next time would be the uh, next town hall would be the LGUs. Uh-huh. Then after the LGUs, we're planning to meet naman the uh, condominium developers as well as um, mga building owners, no? Mm-hmm. Just to apprise them of this situation. Okay. Uh, Spox, uh, Winston, no? I'd like to ask kasi uh, recently po, uh, ang tanong ng mga marami is, lagana po ang mga online or text uh, mga blast that link you to certain uh, uh, loan sharks. Uh, are these loan sharks? Karamihan po makikita rin natin to uh, na nanggagaling sa mga scam hubs na ito, mini scam hubs? Uh, ito kasi na mga scamming na ito, itong mga, mm-hmm. ang tawag natin, mga OLA, no? online mm-hmm. lending application. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are all born out of the scamming industry. Mm-hmm. 
So, in fact, we braided one in Makati last year. Mm. Uh, hindi lang namin na natuloy-tuloy sapagkat napakarami po nila. No? So, I think, uh, thank you for reminding us, I think we need to revisit this uh, particular problem again. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. We need to talk to probably uh, the uh, yung ibang mga financial technology applications like Paymaya, Maya, Yon. and uh, Gcash. Mm -hmm. We need to talk to them again. We need to revisit them and uh, come up with a, a good plan against this uh, OLA, this online lending application na nagiging problema na rin po. Oo, pati yung mga money yeah. remittances po, di ba? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, sad to say, nagkaroon talaga ng scamming industry dito sa Pilipinas. Oo po. Yung ano po, yung sa usapin naman po ng mga SIM cards, kasi nakita po namin doon sa mga raid na ginawa ninyo, particularly dito sa may porak pampaga, napakaraming cellphone. So yung maraming cellphone na po na yun, marami rin pong SIM card doon. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Angel, uh, may problema talaga tayo with regards to the SIM card registration. Uh, we met with the National Telecommunication Commission last year uh, because we raided one scam farm dyan sa May Pasay last August 1. Right. Noong August 1, 2023, we've seen, if I'm not almost more than 2,000 registered SIM mm. cards. Wow. Mm. So, uh, we've seen uh, registered SIM cards in all of these uh, Pogo hubs, scam farms that we have raided, no? So, uh, in fact, dito sa Porok, mas nakakabahala kasi we found cloning devices. Mm -hmm. So, medyo malaking problema yan kasi you just insert one SIM card and Totoo. you can clone uh, right. so many numbers with, oh. with, with, just, with particular one SIM card, no? So, uh, we, we really, again, this is a very uh, complex problem. Mm -hmm. This is highly sophisticated. It has so many uh, overarching problems. Uh, this, this really requires a whole of government approach. Mm. Right. Yes, uh, Sir Winston, I'd also like to take this opportunity to talk about, of course, uh, yung si suspended Mayor Alice Guo. Uh, kailan na po ang target date ng uh, pag-file nyo po ng uh, kaso laban sa kanya? Uh, we'll be giving ourselves Friday mm -hmm. as the deadliest deadline. <laughs> ah, the <laughs> deadliest deadline. To finally, okay. uh, yes, to be able to finally submit the complaints to file the complaints for the Department of Justice. In fact, we're meeting today, this afternoon, to be able to uh, fresh out the documents finally mm -hmm. and start drafting the complaint of David and uh, conclude the drafting no later than Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we are fully prepared by Monday. This is an uh, uh, interagency mm -hmm. uh, effort, no? Yes. All right, uh, we will continue to get in touch with yes. you regarding these details, yung mga updated po natin ang mga uh, information regarding this. But for the meantime, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong oras, PAOK spokesperson Winston Casho. Maraming salamat po. Mabuhay kayo. Maano ako doon sa sinabi ni Spokes Winston eh. Mm. May scamming industry na tayo. Oo, oh, oh, nakakalungkot naman ito. Mahaba-habang usapin yan. Bukas siguro pwede natin balikan yan. But moving forward, uh, ano na bang ating uh, nasa top 3? Moving over now to our top 3, former presidential spokesperson Harry Roque denies any involvement in Pogo operations. Now this comes after documents bearing his signatures were found in a raid of a Pogo hub in Porak, Pampanga. Roque says the papers were just appointment records of his former executive assistant, Albert De La Serna. According to the former palace spokesperson, De La Serna served as his IT staff who managed his social media accounts. He adds that De La Serna, who was a former male pageant contestant, came from a political party. Or family, rather. Mm -hmm. Oh, na pano ut ko yung binigay niya ng pahayag na yan ano ni uh, former spokesperson Harry Roque. Yeah. Galing ado ito sa uh, political family at may mga background na kapag tapos ang pag-aaral may background sa IT etc. Dahil tinutulig sa siyang ayon ng uh, netizen ano yes. dahil sa nakita ng adun sa sa document containing na 
may uh, link. May, li- may link siya, pero hindi, wala naman daw criminal. So, uh, uh, Just well, that, in other words, may, may uh, link of affinity dahil magkakilala. Oo. Oh, oh, oh. Kung baga sabi nga nila, as of now, hindi wala pang criminal liability yung document na nakita nila. But ang sinasabi ng, uh, ng ano dito, ng netizen, of course, hmm. eh, nagsama siya ng EA, pero, di ba, an- anong ginawa doon? Yeah, okay. uh, yun ang ano ng mga... Uh, netizen. Kasi okay. ang kanyang dahilan is uh, meron siyang coronary stent and diabetic siya. Kailangan niya ng assistant with him. Well, you cannot take away yung mga yung pagkakahaka ng mga netizens. It's because, of course, there's an ongoing issue ngayon with regards to yung politics. Diba? You have uh, si uh, Harry Roque, for, former spokesperson of uh, former President Rodrigo Duterte who brought in Uh, not really brought in, but who, who naglaganap ang Pogo Hubs mm. uh, during his time, di ba? Mm. And all of a sudden, uh, things like this are happening left and right. So, syempre madaming conspiracy theories out there na ididikit-dikit lahat yung oh. mga ano na yun. Sabi niya, baka sakali daw, baka doon tumira yung dati. Kasi dati niyang kliyente, yung mm. isang kumpanya doon, na nalilink ngayon sa, ano, sa Pogo Hubs, sa Porak Pampanga. So sabi niya, yung isang kliyente niya, may mga papeles. Yung nakita kasi yung letter niya eh, na mm. nag-request ng visa para nga dito sa kanyang uh, former EA. So, alright. So, ano ba? <laughs> kasi ito, kasi si Albert de la C- ano Albert ba pangalan niya? Mm. De la Cert. Yeah. Uh, dati siyang Mr. Supranational yeah. Pero, pageant. Lilabas, yun ang kasi unang nilabas eh. Spoke sa Harry Roque link to former male pageant. Oo. Oh, oh, Gan- ganun ka agad kasi ang context na lumabas sa online. Oh, pero diba? yun nga, sabi nga, paglilinaw lang ulit na, no? Oh, para oh. lang maayos natin itong uh, usapin yes. natin. Eh, wala, so far ngayon, walang criminal, criminal liability. Itong documents na nakita nila doon. Marami kasi nga ngayon, eh, no? U- 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 unti-unti yung muusbong. Kasi, uh, di ba, 10 days nga yung ginawang yes. raid ng paok sa, sa Porak Pampanga. So, unti-unti nilang nauungkat yung mga papeles sa nando doon, kung sino yung mga possible link. Mga kaya, cellphones, buksan mo isa-isa oh, yan. Kaya Check mo. maganda talaga maimbestigahan kung sino-sino talaga yung nalilink dito sa Pogo para mapanagot sila. Dahil, mm. Tuesday pa lang, ano, high blood na sa lahat ah. sa atin. <laughs> Ay, nako, don't go away because we're not done yet. May dalawa pa tayo. Please stay with stay us. us. Welcome back. You're still watching a brunch here on One News, and we were talking about kanina yung ano huti attack and yes, uh, may, may update. Uh, eh? May update ka? Yes, yung sa MV Tutor Red Sea, di ba? Yung 21 uh, Filipino crew members are back here in the Philippines. May isang nawawala. Pero sa masamang balita po, no, nakakalungkot na balita, kinumbi kinumpirma ng White House na patay na ang nawawalang Pinoy matapos atakihin ng grupong Houthi ang MV Tutor sa Red Sea. Ito po ay kinumpirma na rin ni Department of Migrant Workers Secretary Hans Leo Kakdak. Mm-hmm. Ito po yung uh, pagkamatay ng uh, naturang uh, tripulante. Sad news indeed. Oh, uh, yan yung hinahanap nila. We were hoping as of kanina umaga pa na maano but unfortunately uh, wala pa natin wala pa tayong details no, wala sa circumstances wala pa tayong dita, so, we'll, details kung saan siya nakita di ba paano, paano siya nakita, nakita? Uh, na inform na ba yung family niya etc but of course uh, we are sending our condolences and prayers to the family because uh, stay tuned na lang for updates okay uh, let's move on Going straight to our top two, a Reuters investigation reveals that the U.S. military launched a secret disinformation campaign against China's COVID-19 vaccine. Here's the report. In a bombshell investigative report published June 14, Reuters reported that at the height of the pandemic, the U.S. military ran a secret smear campaign against China's COVID-19 vaccine Sinovac here in the Philippines. Citing former and current U.S. military officials, Reuters said the secret campaign aimed to, quote, counter what it perceived as China's growing influence in the Philippines, a nation hit especially hard by the deadly virus. The report added that this campaign aimed to sow doubt about the safety and efficacy of vaccines and other life-saving aid that was being supplied by China. The U.S. Pentagon supposedly used fake accounts on social media to impersonate Filipinos complaining about the quality of face masks and test kits from China, as well as the Sinovac vaccine, the first COVID-19 jab to be made available in the country. Reuters described this as China's propaganda efforts that morphed into an anti-vax campaign. 
Reuters identified at least 300 accounts on X, formerly Twitter, that matched the descriptions shared by former U.S. military officials familiar with the propaganda campaign. The report said almost all of these fake accounts were created in the summer of 2020 and that they centered on the slogan, China ang virus or China is the virus. While the U.S. military started by targeting Filipinos, the propaganda campaign supposedly expanded beyond Southeast Asia before it was terminated in mid-2021. Reuters estimates that the U.S. military's fake accounts racked up tens of thousands of followers during the program which took place during the last two years of the Duterte administration. The disinformation campaign was said to have started under former President Donald Trump and continued months into the Biden presidency. At a news conference, China's foreign ministry spokesperson Lin Jiang called the U.S. out. We have noted the relevant reports. Facts have repeatedly proven that the U.S. has been manipulating social media to spread false information, influencing public opinion to smear the image of other countries. This is a consistent practice by the U.S. and China is firmly opposed to it. The DOH says the Reuters report needs to be investigated. Assistant Secretary Albert Domingo said the report should also be heard by the appropriate authorities of involved countries. Domingo noted, though, that there are published peer-reviewed studies like one from BMC Public Health which found that vaccination decisions among Filipinos are determined by their age, educational attainment, health insurance, employer requirement, high awareness of the disease, and a high level of vaccine confidence. Meanwhile, former vaccine expert panel head Dr. Nina Gloriani says she doesn't believe that there was ever a smear campaign against Sinovac. Siguro ayoko maniwala o isipin that there could be such people doing a smear campaign like that. Mm. Kasi it was a pandemic, it was a pandemic time. Lahat halos nagwa-worry, sino mamamatay, sino gagaling. And we, we were running after each manufacturer ng vaccine kung sino makakabigay sa atin. And at that time, ang, ang China ang naunang nagbigay ng vaccine sa atin. It took a long time for the Western vaccines to come. DOH data show that over 181 million COVID-19 vaccines were administered in the Philippines by end 2023, almost 49 million of which were Sinovac shots. Arian Kalumbiran, we are One News. Well, there were a lot of uh, skepticism naman talaga at that time about, ano, di ba? Uh, mga Sinovac. vaccines. But we are... Pero lahat actually ng vaccines. Safe eh. naman yung Sinovac. Pero I mean, safe. we had it. Eh. Uh, oh, sabi na, yun natin, it's weaker lang daw than the others. But we're okay. I mean, traditional vaccine we were protected was, naman. Di ba? Oh, we were protected naman. Oh, tignan natin kung ano yung kakahinat na ng uh, uh, bombshell na yan. Ano? Kasi matinding accusation din yan. Uh -oh. But let's move forward. Kasi wala na po tayong oras para sa ating top story for today. Our top story for today is the latest collision incident in the West Philippine Sea. China reported yesterday that a Philippine resupply boat collided against their vessel. But armed forces of the Philippines called this deceptive and misleading. Here's the report. China broke the news that another collision incident has occurred in Ayungin Shoal yesterday. The China Coast Guard said the incident happened around 6 in the morning on June 17. They said the resupply vessel of the Philippines illegally entered Ayungin Shoal, which is still part of our exclusive economic zone. China said that they warned the Philippines that they are violating the International Maritime Collision Avoidance Rules. But they claimed that our vessel ignored this and deliberately approached their ship, resulting in collision. The armed forces of the Philippines refused to discuss the operational details on the vessel's humanitarian rotation and resupply mission at the Ayungin Shoal. AFP said they will not dignify China's recent deceptive and misleading claims. They pointed out the bigger issue in the story, China's illegal presence in our EEZ. The incident happened days after the implementation of China's no trespassing rule in the South China Sea. Maritime security expert Ray Powell warned that the Philippines will struggle in negotiating with China if the bigger country arrested supposedly trespassing Filipinos. That could easily turn into a hostage diplomacy kind of situation where you can imagine there would be a lot of pressure, uh, domestic pressure on the government to get your person back mm -hmm. uh, for understandable reasons. And China could try to use that as, a, as an opportunity to put additional pressure on the government to make other concessions in other areas. Yun. So far, wala yes. pang, hindi pa natin nakakausap, uh, nakakausap ang EFP. But of course, yun nga sabi nila, ito ay deceptive 
and uh, misleading ano uh, dahil nga sabi natin they released, released the, their own version of a video or oh, CCTV oh, oh. kasi oh, oh. Ito, nangyari tong collision na to between the Chinese Coast Guard and the Rory Mission ng PCD mm. at saka ng AFP the other day lamang so ito yung amid nga nitong sinasabi natin na uh, policy ng China yeah. yung uh, mag-aarrest sila ng uh, Uh, trespass, supposed, trespass. supposed uh, trespass. Pero sinasabi nga natin dito ang ating, uh, kumbaga, ang ating side always is, hindi tayo trespassers because that, yan, eh. that's our territory, that's our, within our exclusive economic zone. Pero dahil sa mga dis- mga itong pinapalabas sa China na info na binangga daw natin sila, gusto mm-hmm. gusto talaga, gusto ko tuloy i-revisit yung, ano, yung claim nila, yung renam daw sila ng Vietnamese boat. Mm-hmm. ba diba? Magka-issue before na Vietnamese mm-hmm. boat rammed a Chinese vessel. Baka naman, Uh, is this another propaganda? Gawain ba talaga nila ito? Mm-hmm. Oo. Oh, oh. So, ang, 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 uh, ang, ano ba to? National Task Force for the West Philippine Sea ay nag-issue nga ng uh, kanilang uh, statement, ano, yung NSC, na sinasabi nila na uh, itong routine and resupply mission ng uh, BRP sa Ayungin Shon mm-hmm. ay disrupted by the illegal and aggressive actions of Chinese maritime Ayan, forces. Ayan, malinaw. Yan ang galing oh. sa AFP. Mm-hmm. Ayun ako. Okay. Anyway, ah, uh, ano, Well, congratulations po sa ano, mga fans ng Boston Celtics. Hindi pa, 10688. Wala na yan kasi last 20 seconds, sinab out na lahat ng mga stars. Nag-hug-hug na sila Luka Doncic and si Kyrie Irving sa former team niya. So Boston again uh, retains the championship back from 2008. Congrats again to the Boston Celtics and all yes. their fans. And uh, condolences sa lahat po ng mga fans ng Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> Better luck next time. Oh, sa susunod naman, iba Better naman. Kay, hi, a, kay Ate Nizel at saka kay Maricel Tino. Yes. Felix, hello. At saka kay Hello Gary po sa inyo. Oy, thank you for joining us again. Mm-hmm. Ha? Uh, and of course, with that, I'd like to leave you with a quote. Pasensya na po, hindi ko na ilagay sa screen. And one job. One job that mm-hmm. I failed to do. But uh, here goes the quote. Courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. Wait, di ko makita. Ah. Brenny Brown. Brenny Brown. Oh. And that wraps. Wraps. And that wraps up today's episode of Brunch. Join us again tomorrow. I'm Angela Lagunsad Castro. And I'm Angelo Castro III. We are One News, all sides, all the time. Ay, sorry.